Hi, I'm Danny Whitfield. And I'm Rhoda Whitfield. And it's time for another segment of Marriage Marriage Takes Takes Work. Work. Greetings. We have made it into a new year. We have moved from 2022 to 2023. As a couple, we have new possibilities, new goals to set, new ambitions, and new roads to travel during our marital journey. This year, we've decided to start off fresh by making pertinent changes that are needed for us to move forward and experience a marriage in the manner that God ordained it to be. Therefore, for the month of January, we will be doing a series entitled Preparing for a New Year. Week one, preparation to getting ready. Week two, get your marriage in a reset position. Week three, time to push, restart. And week four, recommit to your marriage. With that being said, we speak life into all marriages that God will richly bless you and your spouse and give you favor to live a victorious and harmonious year. Hello and welcome to another segment of Marriage Takes Work. Let me start off by saying Happy New Year. We have a hot topic for discussion today along with our guests, Elder Derek and First Lady Takia McGee of the Bible-Based Church. So don't change that dial. We'll be right back after we acknowledge our sponsor. And our sponsor today is the Brian D. Smith Cleaning Service. So you can contact them at 850-566-3911 or visit them on bdscleaning.com. Now let's get to the show. So marriage is the journey Mm. that requires us to work it every day. So for the month of January, We'll be doing a series entitled Preparing for a New Year. Mm. It's on our marital journey that we realize that marriage will not always be great. And there will be times that we need to stop and regroup ourselves as a couple to get back on track. So today we want to begin our month discussion with preparations, preparation to getting ready. So, we're, we're preparing for here, 2023, a new year. Where do you believe couples need to begin in making preparations to make a difference in their marriage or their relationship? I'll start with that question. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> well, for us, maybe we started it like two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we make goals. We make personal goals and we make together marriage goals. So for our marriage goals, it could be simply committing to date night once a month. Mm-hmm. Because what happens, I know with us, because we have kids, they're no, they're not small, but they're still busy. You can become so focused on the kids that you forget. Mm-hmm. We're we, not you forget that you're married, but you forget, you know, that just, we need time away too. Like the kids need their friend time. We need our couple time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would add to that uh, from a husband's perspective, I think you first begin on your knees and I didn't kind of be over spiritual, just, just truthful. Um, because I believe that there's a responsibility placed upon the husband as the priest of the household. I think it's important that you really steal yourself to hear from God, um, on what God is saying about your, about your household, about you leading your household, whatever, what have you learned throughout the year? Um, what you need to be learning going forward. And that walks into the goals that that we set. Um, yeah. You want to be realistic, right? I mean, we we've been blessed. The goals that we put together, and this year what we've done is we've asked the kids to give three individual goals for themselves that they want to go after 
um, as well. And something that, you know, they really, really are serious about. We can hold all each, each other accountable. But that that's important. And for me, yeah. as, as a husband, being on the knees really is me being honest and saying, Lord, um, show me what I need to do better, um, yeah. do differently and things of that nature. And, and God really has been faithful. Also, as we just hit 20 years um, this year, you know, we don't want to, I don't want us to get stagnant, right? And and think that because we've hit 20, we've arrived to some mm -hmm. to achieve, right? There's still work to be done in that regard. And so that preparation yeah, yeah. Um, is really, you know, starting on your knees, being honest, setting goals, and not sharing those goals with other people, but you set those goals that you're going to work after together. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think it says something profound, especially when we look at the family. Yeah. When you, when you said your children. Yes, sir. Are included in the planning. Yes, sir. I, I, I think that's, that's, that's a great idea for families to consider that when you sit down, it's just not, it's just not, mom and dad is it's everybody sitting down buying into yeah here's our goal and here's our plan right and then at, at certain intervals in that year that we get a chance to look at where we are yes right and, and where we've come and and really look back at at what we could do better that we did not do in 22 that's right that that's we right. can do in 23 that's right yeah i agree um i believe that what we did in 22, if there's any old baggage that mm -hmm. needs to be left in 22, that's where it needs to be left at. That means that we need to work through those issues before. Right now, anything that needs to be discussed regarding 2022 need to be done right now. 2023, right. it should not walk in there with us. Right. So we need to resolve those issues, get those suitcases, unpack all that old baggage, because there are new things that we have to pack in right. our baggage next year. And we right. don't want to put it on top of dirty laundry. So let's right. get that laundry out of that bag, <laughs> put it in the washing machine, let's get it cleaned up so that we can keep moving forward right. and not always going back. So that's my thing um, that I would, would want to say at this point. Well, let me ask this question. Okay. What do you all find to be the biggest hindrance for couples that keep going in circles versus moving forward? Mm. What do you think is the biggest hindrance? Well, I'll say I think the biggest one really is is the lack of communication. Okay. Right? Just just not, and I'm saying that like not communicating about being honest in the communication. Um, I say it that way, right? Mm -hmm. Just, just, just going along to get along, right? Mm -hmm. Just, just content with what things are, and sometimes that's the the false portrayal on social media to the, to the world to think things are great. That's false impression at church where everybody thinks your marriage is wonderful, but it's it's that public and private communication, honest communication, um, in that regard. Whereas you mentioned about the baggage, right? So we, we, every December, I put our church on a social media shutdown and then a month of rest. Well, I shut down all church-wide meetings and events other than Sunday morning service. And I tell them all the time, this is, you have 31 days to finish whatever is unfinished for, two, for this year That's and right. prepare for the next year, prepare for the next year, right? And I also told them this year, I said, this month, I said, I also want you to really start assessing those that you've allowed to be in your circle. And really ask yeah. yourself an honest question. Have these people expired? Right. Are you are you are you the reason why people are still around? Meaning, are you, if, if you didn't call them or text them or write them, would you all still be in, in communication and friendship and in fellowship? And so I mentioned by honest, honest communication is realizing that we cannot continue doing the way we've been doing things. That's and it. I think a lot of couples go in circle because um you know, the, the standard of marriage in today's world, you know, we're, we do a comparison, right? As long as I'm doing this better than that next couple, in my mind, I'm doing well. But the problem with that is my competition should not be that next couple, right? It used to be a standard by which we have in place. And so I think that honest conversation, I used to ask Takia this question years ago. I stopped asking because I didn't like the answer. <laughs> I would ask her, I would say, if there's one thing about me, you would change. What would it be? And here's why I stopped asking the question, because it wasn't what she would say, although that would hurt. She would always say, she would say, hmm, 
just one? And I was like, what do you mean just one? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, and I, and I was genuine in asking that question, but it also made me realize like she literally was thinking about things. And so asking that question and getting those answers created, I started realizing we weren't being honest at moments in our marriage about really sharing things with each other. And I also realized I didn't want to really want to hear the answer, right? I wanted her really to stroke me and affirm me versus telling me, you know, you could do this a little bit better. And I think that communication is important because at some point I tell people, if you, anything that you suppress eventually becomes volcanic, at some point you're going to have an eruption. And so right. you can, you can avoid that eruption by being up honest up front. I would agree with you. Honest communication, not just communication, but being honest about all things. For instance, I had a, a young lady who texted me and she was talking to me and I was like, but you're asking your husband to be honest, but in this moment, you're not being honest with him. So you can't ask him to give you something that you're not willing to give. Right, right. right. That's, that, right. that's good. I think the other thing I'll say real quickly is, I think the other thing that couples struggle with and they keep going in a circle is, is, is the hero syndrome, right? Where you're wanting your spouse to be what they're not equipped to be, right? Mm. At the end of the day, there's only some, there's something only God can do in your marriage, right? right. And, and, or for example, if you, if you were wounded or hurt by a, a ex, putting that, putting that pressure on your spouse is dangerous. You want a hero syndrome and, and that's male and female. Sometimes for me and we want our wives to be mama or somebody else. And, and that's dangerous because yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's going to resent you, but also morphing into an image you're asking them to be. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I didn't, I don't, I don't want to be married to my mama. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't want to look at my wife like that. So yeah. please don't do that. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, it, it, it's like you said, uh, if we keep going around in circles, we, we say we keep doing the same thing all the time that becomes chaotic, chaotic. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and our, whole, our whole year will end up uh, uh, being chaotic because we keep doing those, those things over and over again. And we never stop once to look at it and say, hey, you know, we, we're doing this thing wrong. Let's back up, let's regroup and let's start again. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. But you got, but see, even when you say, let's stop and start over and do it again, you still, even in that, you got to recognize what you need to do. Sometimes people don't want to let go of stuff. They want to hold on to stuff. And you, in order to move forward and stop going in a circle, you got to be willing to let some things go. Yeah. Some things are not worth just keep beating a dead a horse to death and then bringing him back to life. Let it go. You got to pick and choose your battles. Don't focus on all that petty stuff because yeah. all it's going to do is keep you going round and around and around. And you know what? The bottom line, until they can recognize when the enemy is in the midst, yeah, they will go in a circle because he's going to bring chaos to their marriage. Absolutely. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and, and I, I find when a lot of a lot of couples, especially, uh, is that that problem of letting things go, and they can be so minute, so small, and 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 letting go means this too. That once we've come to to a, to an agreement about something, that we really release it. Yeah, that it, it's not something that we put back here. And then we get back to the we get to the next argument, and we're gonna pull that back. Run away. <laughs> you, you remember when? And I don't want to hear we remember when. I thought we had gotten rid of that. Yeah, yeah, very true. That's so very true. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is. It's those small issues that we let grow and grow and grow and grow, and in and, and the process, we fall out with each other. Yeah, yeah. We fall out with each other. Uh, uh. So at this point, we've done uh, everything that needs to be done to prepare to get ready. Yeah. But what should our mindset now be like as we move forward? What should our mindset be like? That's a really good question. That is. <laughs> That's a really good question. Probably focusing on forward, not, not backwards. Mm -hmm. um, 
check yeah. in, checking in with each other. That's good. Because a lot of times it's just like making exercise goals. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z in February, <laughs> January 19th. I was watching the news the other day, January 19th. You have completely fallen off the wagon. Amen. <laughs> okay. It's like you're you're just saying it just to say it. So there has to be some accountability and some check-in. And mm -hmm. even with accountability, I'm holding you accountable to the goals that you've made. I'm not yes. trying to beat you down or nag you, but you got to have an accountability partner and so, an accountability partner. And I think sometimes couples don't like to be held accountable mm -hmm. for their actions. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'll, I'll tell you, going back to our goals. So what we do is we do an individual goal. So I, I, I put my goals, she does her goals. Then we do goals for our marriage. Mm -hmm. and then we do goals for the family. And then the kids give their individual goal. And we also do goals for our finances. But on our, because we, we have all have iPhones, we're able to share those notes. So every all four of us have that. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we accomplish a goal, we're able to strike through it. But we're all seeing the same thing. Talking about accountability, depending upon what context you're in, you may be in the context where everybody's cheering you on and saluting you and you, and you can make no mistakes. And then you may, you have a hard time accepting when you get home. I was sharing with somebody a few years ago. I said, you know, I'm pastor at church. I'm COO at the firm. I'm this somewhere else. My wife is unimpressed by all that. Right. Yeah. She'll come, I'll come, she'll come. like, yeah, that's all cute, but Hey, um, take this trash out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what it is, is it's the reminder. Amen. Right. The reminder to come back to reality. One of the hardest things looking forward is also reminding yourself um, of the person you married, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the challenges that couples have in marriage is, is I am 100% married to my best friend. So even when she says something to me that that is an ouch moment, the reality of it all is because we're best friends. I know the core of my being, she's not trying to hurt me. Right. She really is trying to help me. In order to move forward and press forward and think forward is to remember um, the person that you are moving forward with, right? We, we had kind of talked about, talked about this recently, this reminiscing on from which we've come, right? From our first date to where we are now and things of that nature and remembering that, listen, we struggled together, right? Yeah. Everything the Lord blessed us to have, we've done it together. And right. so in that, in that moving forward, it's, 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 moving forward but also i think it's being honest about the need to lighten the load um mm -hmm. and that may be people that may be things mm -hmm. and, and that, that's important it's absolutely yeah. important you we can't continue bearing the load for everyone somebody told me years ago that no is a complete sentence Woo! watch out that now <laughs> Learning how to say no and saying it honestly is a complete sentence. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's important because if you don't do that, not only did January 19th come, but you look up and realize that, man, we've carried 2022 to 2023. Mm -hmm. So now we're angry at each other and we're bitter and we're resentful and so on and so forth. And you can't sex that away. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, just, you can't. That's, you that's good. That that, that's you good. know, that's um, you know, uh, I can't remember exactly what you were saying, but what I'm fixing to say is going to tie into what you said. <laughs> and that is this. You know, we have to be able to maintain positive thoughts. Yeah. And if the people and the things that are in our life don't make life positive for us, we got a problem. That's we good. cannot put our focus on the negative issue but yeah. put it on positive thoughts in order to keep moving forward in our marriage yeah, really good. And, and 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 another thing is that you have the you have the mindset that come hell or high water whatever we face in this new year mm -hmm. whatever comes at us and i guess the key to it is that we we, we, we face it together yeah. you're not in it by yourself that's mm -hmm. right and that we're gonna we're gonna go through this those difficult moments, and yes, we're gonna have some. Yeah, they're gonna come. But if we go through those difficult moments together, we're gonna be all right. We gonna we going going with it hand in hand, no matter what. Yeah. Let me say this to the couples that are listening. My grandmother, who who rests in the arms of God, said this to us years ago. 
she would always say, baby, you have history with God. And I didn't know what she meant for years until I got older and realized what she was saying. And what she was trying to teach us as a young age was that if, if you've ever seen God do anything for you, then you have history to fall back on to remind yourself he's able to do it again. Mm -hmm. And Amen. for the couples, if you look back on 2022, there's not a couple listening that did not experience at least one one roll bump, bump, roll hurdle, whatever it may be in your marriage, and God saw you through. Amen. And so you now have something, you have history now to fall back on to remind yourself he's the same God that will see us through the next thing. So don't allow yourself to, to, to surmise your, your marriage is over. No, it's another opportunity for you to see God do something great and mighty because history has proven and God is able. And, and that's very critical um, in these times, especially when people are checking it. People are just calling in marriage early, right? They get oh, one boy. argument, they're done. Oh, boy. Yeah. And, and you got to be able to fight through it and press through it. Um, and the history, your reminder of what God has done in your marriage over the years, even the previous year, should be yes. enough. But hey, you know what? We can get through this again. Let's lock in together. Let's hold fast. Let's stay take rain positive and walk in faith. But but God is able. We've seen him do it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now, you know what? Let me say this. You know, actually, we were getting ready to go into a little point where we were going to reiterate <laughs> what we felt couples needed to focus on in order to, you know, uh, prepare to move forward. And I really believe, you know, I'm going to let everybody else say something, but I really believe that, uh, Derek, you just knocked it, knocked a home run in what you just said from grandma. <laughs> Yeah. So if anybody else want to reiterate a little bit um, or have something to say that uh, couples need to remember in moving forward. I, I, I think Derek hit it earlier when, when he said, begin the year on your face mm -hmm. and on your knees. Okay. On your face and on your knees. If, 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 if anything going to happen, spend that intimate time Sir. with him, Sir. listening to him. And guess what? You got to present that plan to him because ain't no way for that plan to go through. Amen. Unless you've, you've given it to him Sir. and, and let him, let him uh, uh, be the one to, 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 to send that plan through. S spend it on your knees. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. 2023. Is a year of us getting back to prayer. Yes, sir. My God. Getting back to prayer because we think things just, just happen just to be happening. Yes, sir. But it don't work like that. We got to stay on our face and in the presence of God such that he can reveal to us those things that, that, that we'll see before we, they even get to us. Why? Because we're steady in his face. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Steady. Yeah. Yeah, you said it all. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, well, I'm just going to say, don't move nothing out of 22 into 23. Talk Talk you know, bad. we, you know, it's, you know, we don't want our computer, our personal physical computer to go into overload. And if we continue year after year to keep moving stuff from, we move stuff from 19 to 20 to 21 to 22. It's time to unpack it and leave it be. Yeah. And yeah. let's keep moving and be free. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We're at that part of the day where we have to close. And as we close today's segment, we'd like to let you know how you can reach out to us. Inboxes at Danny and Rhoda Whitfield or Marriage Takes Work on Facebook. You can email us at marriagetakeswork2016 at gmail.com. Mark your calendars for January 22nd, 5 to 6.30 p.m. for the next Marriage Forum on Facebook Live. Join us as we have a candid conversation with Dr. Fay regarding hard taboo topics for couples. We also want to remind you to support our sponsor, Brian D. Smith Cleaning Service at 
1-800-273-3911 or visit bdscleaning.com. And so we end with this new year affirmation that we will do whatever is necessary to make our marriage work, to make our marriage successful because God ordained our union. Yeah. This year, we will love hard and work on our marriage to give glory back to God and to thank him for bringing us together. We will work our marriage where it is better than it was the year before. And we will stay the course in order to be blessed. And we will turn to each other and not on each other. Amen. Ooh. Oh, that. That yes. was good. That's good. Yes, All right. <laughs> Do us a favor and share this broadcast with your friends, married and single. With that being said, we would like to give a special thanks to Pastor Derek and First Lady Takiyah McGee for joining us today here on Marriage Takes Work and remind you, our listening audience and viewing audience, to stay the course and be blessed. Thank you for tuning in today. If you wish to contact us, inbox us at Marriage Takes Work on Facebook. And don't forget to join us next week, same time, for another segment of Marriage Takes Work. Remember to love hard and work your marriage.